Excuse me, miss. Uh, what's that you're listening to? Well, it's a podcast. It's all about this couple from England who are in a lifestyle, and they talk about their adventures. So is uh, that child-friendly, then, is it? No. <laughs> they say lots of naughty things, and they swear a lot. But would you like to listen? Get in the gym or to your car With our advice you could go far up and we make mistakes and talk about our sexy dates it's getting hard for this to rhyme just as well because it's bed hopping time <laughs> hello my name's mr h i'm mrs h welcome to the bed hoppers podcast uh, this is episode number 50 bloody eight that's gone so fast. It has come very, yeah. very quickly, hasn't it? Well, it's been like a fortnight since the last one. Oh, okay. So yeah. maybe not that fast. So it's about the same time <laughs> as normal, really. All right. Pretty much an average amount no of time. I have no concept of time, as you know. Well, I know that. You're forever getting ready. Hmm. Fine. <laughs> mm. Apart from the show, because you just rock up and sit down. I just sit down and look pretty. <laughs> well, you do that very well. <laughs> I mean, you tell me what to do. Well, yeah. You look, you look like you're sitting very, very well. Oh, thank you. Oh, and pretty. Oh. Yeah, I thought you might like that bit as well. Anyway, um, let's jump straight in into what's coming up. So we are off to Desire in... Uh, uh, 12 days. 12 days. Uh, by the time this comes out, it's like a week and a half. Oh my God. So we're going with Life on the Swing Set. Yes. And we are running around trying to sort out our costumes. <laughs> well, you are. Well, I, yeah, you mostly... I give no fucks. You, I know you give no fucks. <laughs> you just want a holiday where you sit down and have people bring a mimosa to you and have nachos. I was going to say, do not forget the nachos. No, I'm not going to Or they will be na- hell to pay. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> So, um, we, we've suddenly realised that there's a lot to do before we get to this point. Yeah. We I'm dealing to... with all the important things, like, you know, fucking flight itineraries, and you're like, yeah, I just need another costume, I think. I don't think it's like I need another costume, ah. it's just that I need more accessories to the costumes right. that I've got. Right, uh-huh. And, and one of them, I'm sort of built. I'm not building it. Um, mm. Oh, also, uh, thank you to His Cock, Her Tail for their help in building the costume in one of them. Mainly Mr. Cock. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Cock. <laughs> Not, not Mrs. Taylor. Oh, LV. LV. Yeah, thank you, LV, for sewing my pants together. You were a legend. I mean, Mrs. Tell was really useful in that we just sat and looked at Wish together. I know. I know. She looked pretty. It was fine. That's all she needed to do, much like yourself. Thanks. Yeah, well... We're he, really good at this sitting around shit. Well, he had his measuring tape up and around my junk. <laughs> so, um, yeah, costume-wise, we're, we're running around like idiots. Well, I am. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there not really giving a shit about that. Not really. Whereas I quite enjoy that bit of it. I can only hope for some kind of majestic competition when we're out there so you can win all of it. Win, win all of it. Win. You know, you're very worthwhile entries well, on I, your part. <laughs> I think, you know, other people probably put more effort into it. We've just taken ages to decide what we want to do and yeah. then run around like Looney Tunes at the end of the day. In fairness, life has been in the way of it. Life has been biblically, continuously, exactly. epically I'm amazed there's not a plague of locusts somewhere about to land on me. <laughs> They're probably, I mean, if you stood up, there would probably be a plague of locusts yeah, falling out from fall something. just fall out of me. Yeah, just falling out. <laughs> All over the place, locust in. Yeah, uh, cheers, yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> Which probably explains why Mr. Kitty continues to be ill, because he's eating all the locust. Oh, poor Mr. Kitty. <laughs> so we've got Desire coming up. Yes. Which will be nice. See some nice people. It will be really lovely. Uh, we just need to get there. Yes. Well, that's fine. But I think we've got everything booked, which bodes. Bloody hope so. Yeah, I think so We can so do now. if we haven't. Sleep on the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're just going to bum around. It'll be fine. <laughs> so we've got Desire coming up. Uh, we've got uh, a trip to Nottingham. Yes. Because we're going to see... Barney. Oh, I wanted you to say the sheriff then. Every town <laughs> has its ups and downs. Oh, this is like totally in the Sheriff of Nottingham vibe. Wait. Yeah. And what does he sound like? I don't know. <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> Although there is a Hooters in Nottingham. Yes, there is a Hooters in Nottingham. I like Hooters. I don't think we need to go to Hooters. Oh, but it's I've pro- heard, protein. I've heard that it's not great. Have you? Yeah. What, the actual hooters themselves or the quality of the chicken? Uh, a little column A, little column B. What's wrong with the hooters there? I just heard bad things. Man. Anyway, we shall ask Barney and Emma Stone. Yeah, All I remember right. the names. Very good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not that I couldn't remember the names. I just couldn't remember their given pen names. Oh, as the it were. hooters mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your hooters. Oh, there's that <laughs> owl again. <laughs> <laughs> well, owl's well that ends well. Oh. Anyway, what? That wasn't bad, right? That was pretty good. That, that was pretty acceptable. Yeah. No, I know. Um, so we're going up to Nottingham. 
Yes. To see them, mm-hmm. which will be good. But by the time this comes out, it will be will probably still be there or on our way back. I am probably going to have a hangover. I'm you working think? on it now. Okay, that's good. Uh, we were going to go to Sexpo, but that fucker got cancelled. Again. Right? But yeah. at least we're getting some refunds this time. Yep. So they've stopped doing it. We're not going up to Birmingham. So uh, we're just going to have a... Screw that. Yeah. We're going to have a weekend where we sort our shit out before we go on holiday. No doubt you buy some more costumes. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it's either buying robots or costumes. <laughs> oh, good grief. If I could only have you both. You could combine the two, surely. That's Well, you know, we'll have to see. I don't want to give away any of my costumes yet. <laughs> I will give them away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Freaking eBay at this rate. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing them for like three hours. That's the funny thing. Handmade robot costume, never worn. <laughs> <laughs> Handmade robots. It's a great album. <laughs> Anyway, so Sexpo cancelled, uh, giving us a free weekend. And show-wise, we have got Swinging Room 101. I have to say it like that because it's difficult to <laughs> get my head around which one it should be. I am super excited. I thought I could smell something. About Room 101. Are you? Because, as you know, I'm an intolerant witch. Why are we speaking like I'm Sha- not. No. You are speaking like him. <laughs> Uh, well, so, welcome to Shatner Cast. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a lot of stuff that you don't like. Oh God, I really do. This is going to be so cathartic for me. Is this Intolerant City? Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm going to have to work really hard to restrict it just to the topics. Is it just going to be like... I'm just um, going to be yelling out things I don't like. Bad drivers! It's going to be like Ugly Kid Joe <laughs> jo Bad manners! <laughs> Rain and sunny weather! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much Mrs H... Complains about shit. People who turn right in a right turn only lane and indicate right. That's not... What the actual fuck? All right. Anyway. Okay. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, <laughs> to, with us or to us, if whatever you like one. a little rant with me. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to rant along with Mrs H, why not send us some stuff yes. that you don't like about the lifestyle, oh, not just we, general life. We would get on so well. <laughs> so if, if you're also a moany, moany ass... <laughs> Get in touch with us, and we can all be moany asses together. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Moany asses of fire. We'll be fine. <clears throat> masses of fire. We can do that. We'll, we'll just moan together. It'll be great. And not sexy moans. I was going to say, wait, that sounds like a bit of an orgy. But, uh, when I hear the word moan, all I can think about is that woman that sounded like um, Dory doing a whale impression <laughs> yes. when we went to Comedians or wherever it was, and she was there yes. going, Ooh. Yeah, moaner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And literally, I had to get my partner to squeeze her thighs over top of my head, but A, because it's sexy, but because it drowned Not out the ears, noise. Big ears, that's fine. Big ears? <laughs> I don't have big ears. I can't be accused no, of that. It's quite funny, the idea of some woman having to clamp her thighs around you just to stop your ears from flapping around. Well, <laughs> if I have big ears, it's just as well that you have big muffs. <gasps> ah! I've touché. got what, big muffs? Yeah, to cover my big ears. Ear muffs. What? What? Wait, that makes... <laughs> you make it sound like I have multiple tacos down there. Multiple tacos? Yes. You will do in Mexico. You'll stand up and six tacos are going to fall out. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that'll happen. So what the heck is this episode about? Taking one for the team. Taking one for the team. Yes. Now, I have got a number of things that mm. I'm going to go through as we try and explore this theme. And... It's a very, very difficult subject to tackle, I think. Well, I think, and this, there are many sides to this, mm. to this topic of taking one for the team. And everyone has a bit of an opinion on it. Some people will scream blindly that they never take one for the team. Mm-hmm. Some people will scream blindly. Well, maybe not blindly, but they'll just scream. <laughs> maybe they should go in that 101 thing. I guess if you were blind, you might scream. We, it's up to you. I mm. mean, you're probably more sensitive to sound. Yeah. Maybe. I'm sure that's how it works, superhero style. Apologies for any um, deaf listeners well, like or, or blind listeners or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Whichever way round it is, um, <laughs> they probably don't need to scream. Right. But they could be capable of screaming. Absolutely. Anyway, someone will complain about the fact that you're always taking one for the team. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's it's this weird dynamic of that actually, is there always a four-way connection? Or... Mm-hmm. Are you? Is it just a state of mind? Is it just something that we all overuse to infinity and beyond? Mm. And and is it one of those phrases that uh, covers up a multitude of sins because maybe you didn't handle your situation very well? Not you specifically. Well, probably me. Someone I mean, didn't handle the situation very well and maybe just didn't figure out that the right thing to do was to walk away and say no. 
Exactly. Mm. So we're going to try and cover this. This is going to be friggin' rambly. It is, but equally, it's not something you can unpick in the space of, you know, an hour. Well, it's something that we're going to try and unpick in the space of an hour or, or, you know, like 50 minutes. We're going to go for it. (laughs) So firstly, Mrs. H. Yes. What do we mean typically when we talk about taking one for the team? So I interpret that as making a willing sacrifice so that someone else can benefit. Okay. So like chucking yourself on top of a grenade then? Yes. And not as I said once, laying on a grenade. <laughs> Landing on a grenade. Landing on a grenade. Yes. This is our second go at recording this. In our last version, Mrs. H uttered the classic line, uh, when you land on a grenade. So in my head, I was imagining pilot wings on the NES or SNES or whatever it was, as you're coming in and you're, you're tilting your joypad and all this sort of crap and you land <laughs> on a grenade. How unlucky. I know. It's, but it seems quite purposeful. It would be the sort of thing yeah. that you'd probably intend to do. So in, in your mind, then, what we're talking about is actually um, in the lifestyle, Yes. perhaps not connecting or being as attracted to one of the people. So for me, I probably interpret it as being, uh, if it was me personally thinking, oh, I've taken one for the team, it's I have had a lesser level of satisfaction, but I've, I've foregone that willingly so that my partner can have a good experience because it's been apparent to me that... The connection with them was very good. Okay. So would you say, with that definition of mine, Mm. have we taken one for the team? (laughs) So honestly, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you you can't... Don't uh, call me that. (laughs) You you cannot dress this up in a one-size-fits-all sort of, you know, black and white situation. But what you can do is is reflect on a situation and realise that within the grey areas there um there was probably elements of one or both of us feeling different levels of enjoyment Mm. to an experience and that probably translates as being i didn't enjoy it as much as he did so for me i'm probably thinking oh man he had a better time than me but because i'm a good egg i took one for the team (laughs) that's how you kind of dress it up or justify it in your head isn't it do you think is it about the experience or is it about the looks and attraction that person oh that's a good one because actually for me um as you know looks uh don't actually aren't actually super super important so for me this, which humor is why you married me <laughs> well, I'm oh, married oh, well, you for your to... scintillating personality oh shit now we're in <laughs> fucking hell no i i think humor personality humor uh, using humor go a very very long way for me so it isn't necessarily about um something as superficial as how does somebody look Mm -hmm. although it is important in terms of there being a chemistry and a connection Mm -hmm. but uh it's not necessarily something i would i would if it wasn't quite there it wouldn't matter maybe which is what i mean by there being incremental sort of um levels of enjoyment or or levels of taking one for the team so the first hurdle then i guess is levels of attractiveness Mm -hmm. so you've you've got the instant look at someone do you like the physical yeah features and look at them yeah can you imagine yourself in a a physical interaction with them Mm -hmm. and i think quite often and we've talked about this before is that typically and i'm going to be very very generic here the guys tend to make much less effort as well it has been noted sometimes. Yeah. So, and again, it's a generalization. It can be, but typically, what in our experience, we've found yes. that it's often the guys that are a little bit lacking. Not yeah. always the case, but often that's from a first off from an effort perspective, mm. but also sometimes from a looks perspective. And if you're going with a, a gut reaction, and generally speaking, you are because what you're looking at is is a chemistry thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you're right. You know, you, you it's very important. Like first uh, first impressions do last, don't yeah. they? And it's quite interesting because, I mean, we use Fab Swingers in yeah. the UK. Often you'll get pictures of people. Mm. And pictures, whilst they do um, give you something like a thousand words, mm. uh, and you, you can get a level of personality and a level of look and all that sort of stuff. Actually, until you meet someone face to face, you just yeah, can't be sure. Yeah, a whole judging a book by its cover. Yeah. yeah. And, and often, a pic- well, a picture should be your best representation or, mm-hmm. or some element of you brought to life. Now, when you meet someone for real, they may not put. They may be having a bad day. They may may mm. not. They may have a couple of spots. They may, whatever it might be. You you get this very real interpretation of them because they are there yeah. in front of you, and you can mm-hmm. see that. 
So there is that element of att attractiveness as, in terms of first sight, but also then you get to meet the, or, or get to know the person better, and yeah. you get to have a level of personality and a level of is there a connection from a um, you know are, are we in the same area? Did they vote to leave Europe or did they decide <laughs> to stay? Well, I laugh, but it's true. <laughs> it's what it is, you know. Did they vote for Trump or not? Uh, and it's no good if you know that on some fundamental level you just will never see eye to eye. Yeah. No I matter mean, how attractive they are. It, no, yeah, exactly. If they're turning around and telling me that Boris Johnson is a genius. A dreamboat. A dreamboat. <laughs> I'm going to have a level of personality <laughs> clash with that person. Now, it's not often we get particularly political, but that's just one of the measures. I mean, if they turn around and tell me Transformers aren't awesome, I can then probably... they're dead to you. Well, no, I can probably live with that. All right. I can Because I, that's my passion. I'm not yeah. expecting... Um, everyone to be on the same level of passion about robots. Although if they do like them, then they get, you know, extra points. Bonus and that, points. Yeah, bonus hop, bed hop points. Yeah. Uh, which I've been throwing away with wild abandon you recently. You really have. I know, I gave away like 60 or 70 the other day. At least days. I've stopped giving coffees away with them. <laughs> that's true, that's true. They are <laughs> irredeemable for, for, for coffees. But, Although I was going to say, actually, while you're on the subject of attraction, it's also quite important, their attractiveness level, if that's a word, uh, can also um, extend to their interaction with their partner. Yes. Yes. Well, that's what I was just about to oh, sort of going to It's like I can to. read so, your mind. Well, it's not I so can't much... read your notes. They're too far away. Well, I know. It's almost, well, it's kind of like as an overall package. Yeah. How attractive are they? And also what's the interaction between them? Because what I like to see is that they are they give a shit about each other. Yeah. And the more they bounce off each other and interact with each other, the more I like them. So when typically. I think about play dates that we've had that have been really good and memorable. Yeah. They have typically involved a connection between that couple as well as ourselves. Yeah, and whilst I don't play with the guys, actually, I like to be able to yeah. like the guys as, as human beings mm. because we like to have a bit more of a relate, not a relationship, but a bit more of a connection with people yeah. rather than just a one off thing. Though that's possible, our preference is to have a bit more. Yeah, and isn't it also important that, you know, if this individual is going to be. Um, playing with your newest and dearest, mm -hmm. then you want them to be someone that you not approve of, but you can, you know, validate in some way in your head as being worthy of yeah, the other half. Well, I'll come on to self worth mm -hmm. in a minute, I think. But but so okay, you've got we've talked about the physical attraction. Yeah. we've talked about the the personality, mm -hmm. and and those are things that typically you can sort of work work out whether you're interested in someone before you get into a play situation, unless you're in a club and it's just all full steam ahead. In which case, sometimes the... And, and clubs are another thing altogether because they shift the dynamic. Quite often in a club, you're in a much quicker escalated scenario and it's yeah, do, you... do or die, play or die kind of situations. <laughs> Death or glory. It is yeah. a bit. And I think there is a, a level of fun and excitement about that. But typically we like to establish a relationship with people or, or that level. Mm. Um, so we tend not to go down that route. I would actually say it's probably um, it would probably be more typical for a taking one the team s situation to occur in a place like a club for me. Yeah, you think? Yeah, because Just... you don't have the, you don't have that time on your side to sort of build up connections because you're only really there for a few hours potentially. Yeah, that's true. I mean, especially you know you know they're going to turn the lights on in ten minutes, so you've got to move quickly, otherwise you'll see them in their full glory. Yeah, so I guess you've probably <laughs> you've almost got like. Um, You've almost got like a tolerance factor when you're in a club because you you know that you've invested the time into going there, and because your time is limited, you almost kind of shift your your sort of boundaries around a little bit and move your levels of what you find to be um, I don't know agreeable maybe. Well, there is I think when you go to a club, whether you you know despite the fact that we all say expectations are, we shouldn't have them, hmm. there are levels of expectations in any date, I think. You can't help that because you want to be excited about going. Yeah. You want to have all these fun adventures. You might not know what they are, but you want to look forward to it and you want to have sexy time. Yeah. That's why we're in this, mm -hmm. be it with each other or with somebody else. But you, you actually, you go into a club and you don't find the exact couple that you want often. Sometimes mm. it's possible, but you actually, you know, the experience is more interesting than the than, yeah, than the actual play. connection yeah, with the, yeah, and the play itself. So, but going back to this, so we we, we mm. talked about the physicality, we talked mm -hmm. about the personality, we talked about the the package of them as a couple. Yeah. And okay, you get down, start getting down to business, and sometimes the actual interaction itself, the play, means that you take one for the team. 
Oh, and what do you mean by that? Well, I think there's a couple of things. One, the play might not be very good. Okay. And that, again, could be because actually you've not really spent any time playing with this person until this point. So why on earth would they necessarily set the world on fire for you? Yeah. you. I mean, and not everyone is to everyone's liking or to, ta- yeah. to taste. Um, and you may find that you look over and your partner is having the world's best connection <laughs> and most awesome time ever. And you might as well be sat there playing with your robots at home. <laughs> and we've been in that situation before. Yeah. Where, and, and a couple of times where one of us is having a, a, a great time and there's been a great connection. And it, this has been both sides of our, mm. our coin or partnership. And the other one is just sat there and might as well be filing the nails. <laughs> so, you know, you you could... You could say that that you you take one for the team because you want you can see that your partner is having a right. great time and actually you know you might as well carry on playing or you might as well finish it or whatever it might be because you don't want to spoil you their... don't want to spoil their enjoyment yeah. or and and it may well be that that you're not taking one for the team but you're just the experience isn't as awesome as what they're having which can lead to some really big sort of issues in your head because mm. if he says pointing to his head but obviously gentle listening you can't see him <laughs> doing that. And we, I've been there. I've literally seen you having this great old time and I am there. Literally, I want to get out. What I should have done at that point is mm. probably said, can we swap back? Can we stop? Can we go home now? Um, you know, throw but, down a smoke bomb and disappear like a ninja into the night. But where is where is that line for you? At what point do you in your head think, ah, uh, no, I'm out? I think, to be fair, in this, this particular situation that I'm thinking about... Um, I didn't really realise that that line was it was it was escalating mm. towards that, but actually things were were okay and the experience was right. fun enough for it to carry on. And then it got to a point where I'm like, I'm really not enjoying this anymore. This is just that. But I knew you really liked the fella and really wanted to play with him. So I I literally kind of thought, well, it's all going to finish up soon. It's going to be done, <laughs> and then we can just go. And and then a whole set of circumstances happened, and that carried on going. So for you then, would you did you do that, do you think, because you genuinely wanted me to enjoy myself or because you didn't want to um, stop something midway? I think there was a 80% of it was probably um, made up. <laughs> All facts are made up, clearly. No, but 80% was about making sure you had a good time because I knew that you really wanted to play with this, this guy. However, um, a much smaller percent, sort of 20%, was because I guess I was half halfway through that. I yeah. was kind of it felt it didn't feel quite right to stop it, and it was only really on reflection that I recognised that really I had taken one for the team in, in my own sort of yeah. You so know, you were review. quite invested up to a point, and then your logical brain kicked in and told you that actually this is not. This is not what not I'm. That enjoyable it's not what all. I want. And what I should have done was was said, "Oh, can we swap back, or can we cancel this, or do you, would you mind if we, you know, stop?" That's or interesting that you you know the right thing to do is what you should have done. Yeah. But is that right thing um, for for your own sort of self self worth, as you said, or for the benefit of the fact that actually you're being very unauthentic by having an experience with someone who thinks you're having a good time and in actual fact you're not. Well, and this is the other thing, you know, and, and the other thing that was in the back of my head um, was actually, you know, I didn't want to upset this person. Right. I, I genuinely like this person as a human mm. being, but actually didn't want to to play. Didn't want to go there. Didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to go there. I certainly wouldn't want to go back there necessarily. But, and I think that's, that's where you can reflect on that stuff and, and, in hindsight, you can go, actually, what I should have done was this and I could have handled it better. But instead, what I did was carried on. And then actually, when we when we got out of that place and we turned around to chat to each other, mm. you were like, that was a great experience. And I was like, this is an awful experience. I'm never, you know, don't, don't want to do that again. And it's interesting because I masked the, the communication between the two of us. So you would have that mm. good time. Also a bit of, of so I didn't upset anybody and yeah. make them feel bad. Which kind of leads me to the next bit. It's actually, you know, what if you're the person, you know, what if you are the, the weakest the link? link? That's an oh. awful phrase. And I, 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 I can't think of any other way to phrase it right now. Well, there isn't really in a way. If, if you are the one that someone is taking one for the team for. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you are the one that is the ball licker. <laughs> you are the one that, 
If you had the world. <laughs> well, you know, like you were saying before, you know, moons align very rarely. So it stands to reason by the law of averages that there's always going to be someone within that dynamic that is potentially the weaker link because you can't all be amazing. And I think we've been in situations where as a dynamic, um, one pairing knows they're not as mm. connected. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it is a case of, hey, let's... <laughs> it sounds awful. Let's make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> oh, my God. But but it's kind of... A, it almost is that. It's it's kind of, hey, let's have some fun. But mm. but neither one of you is kind of going over the top to to deliver or... Or think too much about that connection and that that moment. Yeah, it's almost like an implied tolerance level. Then, yeah, like maybe that person's like, yeah, I know you don't dig me as much, but hey, <laughs> but I'll put up with it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you crack on for now. It's fine. <laughs> so you know, I think that, and that comes back to that question of, are you always taking one for the team, or is it a state of mind? Hmm. Do we think that you're always taking one for the team? And I, I'm not so sure that, that we are. I think that feels like a very cynical way to look at it. Mm. And if anything, it, it, it makes me feel like the situations are lessened by giving in that term. OK, the connections aren't always as great, but that's life. That's just being human. Well, interestingly, it, if we don't always come away from a situation and ask ourselves, did I take one for the team? Did he take one for the team? Generally speaking, because we're really lucky to find good connections, we may come away from play dates or situations and think that was fun. And I think, and you don't maybe have the need to self-reflect and look for um, issues that weren't there, perhaps. So, is it only that those issues arise though when there is a problem or you feel mm. like you had a less good experience as your partner? Because sometimes. Feeling like you've taken one for the team is much more about your partner having an amazing experience and you having and a good you one. you not having or the same level. Having the same level. Yeah. Like maybe it's like a 10 out of 10 and you get a 7 out of 10. Sometimes that, you know, when when one of us is like having this amazing time and it's going on forever and whatever and it's all fireworks <laughs> clearly and all this sort of stuff. And the other one is kind of like, oh, this is really good fun. This is sex. But wait a second. How come <laughs> they are having such an amazing time? Right. And therefore, am I am I being left worse off? Would I, you know, I'm like, if one of us, if we were playing together, mm. would that, you know, would, right? So would that maybe even what that out? is actually straying into then is just a touch of envy. Yeah. Rather than, like we could be having steak together, and me thinking, wait a minute, he's enjoying his steak way more. He has a better piece than me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, that that to me is that's just a natural human reaction to wanting um something as good as someone else is enjoying yeah i think that's yeah that's kind of uh, i think there's a you've got to keep your mind around that sort of stuff and i think for me to say that every 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 time that you go into yeah. one of these uh play dates or one of these arrangements whatever to say that every time is a take your one for the team situation i think is devalues the whole experience as a whole i agree and you'd never do it no you, you'd never actually get around to having any play dates at all or any interactions because you'd constantly be worried oh god what if and i think they don't enjoy it as much as me or vice versa and what have you i think there is something about are you enjoying the experience and if you're enjoying the experience then great live in yeah. that moment but actually don't try not to to let your the partner's experience and their levels of enjoyment impact yours, unless they are genuinely not enjoying it. So right, if you're and having you a good can time, see they're not enjoying yeah. it. So if you're having a good time, great, everyone's fine. It's not a taking one for the team situation. It's just that someone may be enjoying it more than you are. Hmm. I mean, what I have learned from all these little areas of self-reflection... Is nothing. Nothing at all. Shut up. No, what I have learned... Is that you like bacon sandwiches <laughs> after a, after a meal. <laughs> Wait, after meat or a meat? <laughs> <laughs> column A, column B. <laughs> well, no, what I was going to say was it has uh, given me the ability to step back and maybe consider I should pick up more on perception. Mm -hmm. so pick up more on perception. I should be that, more perceptive pick up, pick of up perception. whether... And if I really know you as well as I think I do, and we've been together a long time, mm -hmm. then... Actually, I should know the signs. What I need is an Apple product that I can wear oh, that will tell you when, when I'm not enjoying it as much as I should be. <laughs> warning, warning, Will Robinson. <laughs> Mr. H is not enjoying the play date as much as he should be. 
Abort, abort, if switch only partners. If there was an app for that. Could... There probably is there somewhere. Probably is. We could probably design it. But it is around perception of whether we are enjoying it or not. Yeah, but we can't always expect our partners to be always checking in to make sure that we're okay because we're adults and we're accountable for our own well, uh, you enjoyment know, for the situation. And this was the thing. A we reflection... can't blame them for maybe, so why didn't you spot I wasn't having a good time? Well, actually, you're an adult, you can tell me. Yeah. I think there is there is a bit about actually being very open to seeing what our partners are doing and and checking in on them. But there mm. is also very much a responsibility to for you to recognise that you're not enjoying something mm. and and attempt to do something about it. Yeah. Oh, whether that's God, yeah. stopping, swapping back, whether that's taking a break, whether that's throwing down a smoke bomb and disappearing out of there like Batman. Or asking for what you want. Yeah. And changing it. Mm. And but that situation that we're talking yeah. about, I did ask for what I want. I tried to shift to what I want <laughs> and I did not get what I wanted. Oh, on this occasion, it did not work. No, for that reason, I was out. But no, I just carried on anyway. But I think what you said, the, the other point you made, which I thought was really, really good, is it's Oh, not... tell me again. I like that <laughs> sentence. What, me telling you how good your point is? Yes. It's a fine point. Oh, you can okay. point at things with it. All right, yeah. <laughs> No, I was going to say, um, it's interesting what you said about not letting all this... It is my other half not enjoying the situation be at the detriment of your own enjoyment because you can overthink the whole thing yeah. so radically that you never actually enjoy it anyway. I think there is a checking in piece. Yeah. But, and, but I don't think it necessarily needs to be a constant flow of, of no. data flowing back from them. Are you okay? What about now? Are you still okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I know. Well, in fact, when we went to Australia, not that, that we can repeat the name of it. I know. Because I know you I, want I'm to. I'm not going to. We, we made an app with, or well, you didn't make an app, but you pretended there was an app with my name in it. Is this because of my incessant checking in and making sure you're okay? It is because of that. So much so... It's because I love you. That... The other members of the party adapted this phrase <laughs> and were constantly asking me if I was okay. Like I was a fragile, like, you know, made of glass child. Do you know or why it exists? It's because you turned down Roadhead. It's your own fucking fault. I subsequently resolved that the Roadhead issue. That was born issue. because of your lack of uh, ability to accept Roadhead. No, that was born well before then. Well, if I it confirmed was, it. It was on day two when they pointed out that you were asking me if I was okay every eight and a half seconds. Well, because, you know... It's I'm very difficult not to you. say the name of this app. I, have I to really, say. I know. It really is difficult. <laughs> because it was a phrase that we use so much. If anyway, we develop it, we'll have to be really careful about Yes, that. moving swiftly onwards. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the value of your relationship and your partnership. Right. So, I think it's, for me, it's a little bit about how much value do you place on you as a team? Mm-hmm. What is the value of you as a couple? Is one of you worth substantially more, like in our case? Oh, goodness. What a question. Well, because you do, maybe you think about that. Maybe you think the amount of times that we've spoken to um, couples and, yeah. and typically the man will say, it's her that brings everyone in, they all love her. <laughs> typically. I know all. what you mean. Now, there, have, there yeah. have been a few, what I would term, power couples. Okay. Where they are equally as hot. Yes. And we definitely know a fair few of them. Yeah, we do. But a lot of people that we've spoken to, they they do recognise that one of them is hotter than the other, even if they're not necessarily right about their own judgment. Oh, so their perception is that one of them is hotter. So what value do you place on you as a couple? And does that mean that if you're thinking about the value that you place on each other and whether whether you are the weakest link or not, yeah, I mean, we've always had these conversations, haven't we? Sort of, I don't want to be the weakest link, and that's why I'm. That's constantly... why you make me live in the cupboard underneath the stairs. <laughs> and this is why, um, and this is why I think I I do have so many body image crises because I don't want to be that one where they're sort of like, oh well, he's nice, but oh her, it's like a joint of meat tied up in a bit of string. <laughs> nice hams. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a Cumberland sausage. <laughs> um, but no, the value I place on our relationship is is equal in terms of, I think, as a couple, we bring different things to a, a dynamic. Mm-hmm. But actually, I probably place you way above me. But I think that's because of the way I view our relationship generally as being you kind of saved me. And I oh. can't ever shift that opinion in my head that you stepped in and helped me and saved me. And I'll always forever sort of treasure that well i mean that's really nice of you to say but you know to be fair 
I found a diamond in the rough. I pushed ah. it too fucking much, and now you're worth more than I. Yeah, street rat. Yeah, street <laughs> scoundrel, street rat. I don't think you can say I was ever a street rat, though. No, that's true. <laughs> you you were dressed like a velveteen Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, me. When I met you. However, <laughs> it's it's interesting that we both put each other ahead of our yeah of our respective partnership. Where, I mean, it's what value do you put on us as a couple? Where do you see us placing? How, I mean, how do you mm. quantify those things? It's really difficult. It's so difficult. Because when you look at another couple, you make a value judgment on yourselves. And and this often means that you prevent yourselves from talking to other couples. You're like, they would be taking one for the team if they played with us. <laughs> That's or, interesting, yeah. Or we are, <laughs> we are a power couple compared to them. This would be a step downwards for us. Mm. That's a terrible way of looking at it. And I mean that jokingly, but there is a half truth to it. I think so. I and think as a couple, you probably do make a little bit of a snap judgment sometimes yeah. when you see other potential couples. And there is something around, actually, what is the worth of someone playing with your partner? Oh, yeah. Are they worthy? Have they pulled Excalibur out of the bloody stone? <laughs> and are they the king of friggin' England? And are they enough for my wife? And, you know, you want them handed back in one piece. You do. You do. And it, it it's all about that, actually, your perceptions of you as a couple and what, what do you see as your whole experience? Because some people, they get into this lifestyle, <clears throat> pardon me, and they, um, they just want to fuck everything. That's mm-hmm. their approach. And to be fair, we could go about that and that, that way. Oh, if we, that's your, your jibe. Yeah, of course you could. Fuck anything and everything. Well, maybe not, because <laughs> I suspect people's perception of us would would be impacted as a result of that. And actually, maybe they already have that perception. Who knows? But actually, you know, you could go in and do that. And and then these things become much less of an issue mm. because you're not worried about taking one for the team. You just want to get something in your clunge and your dick. <laughs> I mean, that's the, but that's the reality, isn't it? That's what you're, you're looking for. Yeah. I Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I think for me... I, I see us very much as a as a, a team, yeah, uh, a, a double act, if you will. And you know, some some couples. I mean, again, this is a straying off slightly, but it's relevant. Some people will be able to overcome these taking on for the team issues by actually segueing and playing separately. Yes, which again is well, a very different way of dealing with it. But I suspect they can if they choose to do that. Well, we don't. I, I mean. And this is the thing, if you're just playing by yourself and you've got much more control yeah. to a certain extent over who, who you play with um, and you can pick and choose, I suspect a single guy, you, you, that may be slightly different to the experience of being yeah. a single woman. But, you know, it, is, it, it, does, it does make a difference to that approach. I think the other thing, you know, that we've talked about with this around self-worth is actually, you know, where, where do you see yourself and where, what value do you put on, on your own mm. looks and what confidence do you have about it? You know, if you go in there with, with the largest amount of self-ego, and Christ knows I'm capable of doing that every now and then, and apologies for using the, the C word, uh, vanilla rice. Very sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if I went in there with, with, with my super inflated Mr. H has had all the compliments ego, mm. then I'd probably never play with anybody until <laughs> I met someone intimidating and then I'd run away with my tail literally between my legs going, oh my God, they're too hot. I can't do this. Uh, <laughs> and there have been occasions where we've met people and I've genuinely been intimidated by the way they look. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's happened, especially earlier on, I think. Mm. Because it was kind of, I think very early on, we, 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 we were much more open to playing with different people. Right. I think. And as, we, as we've gone on, we've sort of changed where we, where we think we sit in the world. That sounds very, sort of very station orientated in a way. But actually, we, we started off, and I think we, we did start, and this is a horrible thing, with a training bar couple. <laughs> well, and part of that was because we were both terrified the other one would fall in love and run off with someone. Well, and that's Partly. the thing. There was part of that. There was part of the, we don't know how this is this works. Can we play with another couple? Yeah. How is that going to pan and out? And not explode. And not, yeah, not keel over and break our relationship. Yeah. So we went with almost the lowest common denominator in a way, oh that's God, awful. It is. I feel bad doing that. But, but actually, equally, we can look back and we, we recognise that that was something we did yeah. that we're not necessarily proud of. I'm not always a good person. No. I'm not even vaguely a good person half the time. <laughs> but, but actually, we both decided consciously 
to take one for the team so that we could figure out whether this lifestyle yeah. was going to work for whether us or not. it was going to break us or not. It didn't break us, but, you know, I think in terms of people we played with, that was probably our least pleasurable experience. Mm. So, you know, it, it, for science, good. <laughs> for, for being a good human being, fucking terrible. But <laughs> interestingly, you can take one for yourself. <laughs> so let me give an example. So oh, say there's dear. a couple that... that um, where she's really hot. Right. He's not so hot. Right. You could, as a bi lady, ah. take one for yourself by playing with him so that you can get to, to her. her. Oh, her fiendish. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a, a master plan to me. <laughs> Rubs hands together. <laughs> and, and yes. And your faith in your friends is your. Wow, let's see. I mean, that's some. Um... A little selfish, but equally, and as we said before, if in this lifestyle you're not necessarily always seeking out, you know, long-term relationship goals here, and actually sometimes you may never meet these people again. Yeah. And what you're really doing is just having an experience. Yeah. Then, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, you, so that can happen. But that, that's, and again, that's something that can work to advantage really because if i then think wow well he's super into this woman Mm -hmm. i'm and i may be not feeling it so much for him Mm. then you're right absolutely i i could i could take one for myself (laughs) okay so let's let's look at the tables how does that feel if you're on the receiving end of that do you know (gasps) i know i was thinking this how does is it a bad thing for the other couple because well, ultimately, he still gets to play with you. Absolutely. And I, again, I maintain that you are accountable for managing your own navigation through this sometimes. And yeah. you're an adult. Well, and if you, you can't navigate that... for shit. Fuck you. <laughs> I can park, though. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. But I had heard that. Surely, if you... I mean, again, you're an adult. You can read signals. Yeah. And it, it may be apparent to you that if someone isn't into you, you may spot some physical signs that that is the case. Does it feel like a hollow victory? <laughs> what bit? You think someone, you're a pity fuck? Yeah. Oh, uh, do you know if you're a pity fuck? I, I, sometimes you can feel that way. Sometimes it mm. can genuinely feel as though it's clearly that... that They're he, doing it Doing to, it for, for them. The, for them mm-hmm. um, or for, for them to play with you. Yeah. And that you're a spare part, yeah. or I'm a spare part, whichever way around Third it is. Wheel. We've noticed that in a, uh-huh. in a in a in a few bits. Well, I suspect it does happen. Yeah, and you'd be quite naive to enter this uh, this kind of uh, journey without assuming it was never going to happen to you. Mm. Because again, as I said, it's how are people always going to hit it off a hundred percent of the time and navigate their way through all these waters and still emerge the other side? Like that was an amazing experience. Of course, it's going to be occasions where it's not necessarily what you think it's going to be. Mm. But I I do think as an adult, you can make those decisions and you can manage your expectations. So if you're in that situation, what can you do? Because you can say no. You can say no. You can can say I'd rather, I'd rather not the hollow victory. (laughs) Um, and it depends how far into that date you are. And we have had situations where we have been midway through a date, maybe. Not an actual got to playing bit, but mm-hmm. we both maybe reached a conclusion of some sort. And we may be on different pages at this point. But we've been sensible enough to check in and go, nah, one of us isn't feeling it. Mm. And you abort before you get any further. Yeah. Sometimes we've had a state of play where we're not sure. Mm-hmm. And I think this is this is an interesting one for me because sometimes it takes longer to to get on the side of somebody and and to get them and and to like them in the in the way that you want to play with them. And for me, I don't know whether that's you know should you have this immediate connection or is it that connections can build. And if you have a social and then you meet someone and you're like, oh, they're nice people. Be, I don't know if we want to play them. Let's play them meet yet. them again. Let's meet them again. Mm. You do that again. You're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're, they seem fine, nice. They're, they're chat- then you meet them again or whatever. And then you just don't know because <laughs> you, if your mind has been on the fence before. Yeah. Then... And, you know, arguably, is it ever going to get off the fence? And, oh, yeah. you know, if you don't have that instant, actually, yeah, I can see us playing at some point, then why why should you flog a dead horse? Oh, exactly. I don't know. 
So the other thing, that or I maybe even grow into a person, <laughs> grow into <Yeah>. a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I really want to talk about here is actually the ability to say no. Ooh, Ooh. and it's not—it's been something that we have been quite bad at, actually. And I think I agree completely. I am lousy at saying no. And I think we've also been a bit lousy at saying no in terms of we've got ourselves into play dates, which we probably shouldn't have done as mm-hmm. a couple. And I think we've gone along for the adventure and there's nothing wrong with that. No. And the experience has been been absolutely fine. But but actually, we probably should have just said no. <laughs> uh, and I think one of the things that we've been sort of doing more frequently, although we've been, we're still sort of in the very early stages of getting through this, is, is, is actually saying no. If, if, if the connection isn't, isn't a sexual one mm-hmm. and isn't a kind of, hey, let's go on a play date, can't wait to rip your pants off type thing, then... Let's be cautious and say no. Let's and and let's build more social connections. Mm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with making more friends in the lifestyle because you know it's really great. We love those relationships, and sometimes those friendships are, are more fun than than and the actual. They may sexy well ones. end up being pants on friends, uh, but with with interesting connections. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think we just got to be much better at doing that and recognizing those moments. And I think. That's not to say that we don't like people or that we, we don't think they're great. It's just there isn't a pants-off connection. Well, I think it's funny that, like, you, you make friends with people in lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes there's a kind of almost an assumption that because you're friends in the lifestyle, at some point, all your pants are going to fall off. Yeah. Well, actually, no, it doesn't have to, does it? You can just be awesome friends and sometimes have adult conversations. you rock up at your friends and they make pants for you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and sometimes you can just hang out and not take your pants off. Yeah. And then actually the next time you see each other, pants off again. Yeah. And then pants on. But that's when you know you've found some true connections. And I think that's the thing for me. It's that mm. ability to be able to say no and be much more open with the fact that actually, guys, this, we don't think this is going to be a pants yeah. off thing, but we'd love to meet you. We love you. And we, we'd very much like to keep hanging around. But it can be quite a difficult thing, I think, because we've not been very good at doing it before. Is it because, you know, on some level you're a bit of a crowd pleaser? I know I am. Well, I think there is a bit of that. I don't like saying no to people because I don't like... And I I mean this in any way of life. I don't just mean specifically in the lifestyle. I find it difficult to say no sometimes because I don't want to then enter that conflict. Not necessarily there's going to be conflict, but I find it almost like... I'm not going to bother. Well, I think for me, it's sometimes it's about feeling attracted and wanted, actually. And it's about mm. being being recognised in that way. And actually, um, if someone's really interested, I find that such uh, a, yeah. an excitement. I'm, wow, because I spent so many years being a daft nerd. Oh, and you still away. are, darling. I, well, I am, yeah. Very <laughs> much, thank you. Um, but, but daft Really nerd. good looking one, though. Thank you. How are you doing? Um <laughs> You know, with, without being able to talk to women and without having girlfriends or even having one that stands or whatever. And actually, when someone displays a level of interest, my natural go-to is, I must reach the conclusion with this because this is not going to be around forever. I've got to make the most of it. Because that's just my <laughs> level of confidence about who I am. Um, also, there is the false ego of Mr. H that is um, completely and utterly out there. But the, it's just a, a weird thing. But But when we've met couples... I've often sort of taken that as the be all and end all to whether we play or not. Because Mm -hmm. if someone's showing a level of interest, then I'm like, wow, this is great. Equally, if they're not showing any interest at all, or I'm doubtful of it as to whether they're interested in, my interest goes straight out the window. Oh, yeah. You like, your libido will shrivel up and go away. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's clearly all about me, but I mean, (laughs) it it just goes right out the door. And if, if I can't tell whether someone is interested or not, I... I very quickly back away. And and whilst I remain, may remain flirty or, or chatty or whatever, mentally I've zoned out. And I, I find it very hard to, or, to, not. or not to, to put myself in the, in the mindset of having a sexy situation with that person. And is that because you feel like the effort is is really one-sided from your perspective. Yeah, I think there is... And you want someone to put as much effort into making it work as you are. Oh, yeah. I, and I think, you know, we've met people where um, I, I 
I find them really, really attractive, but I also find them intimidating and mm-hmm. they don't seem to portray whether they're interested or not. So, so their attractiveness level will probably diminish. It, it diminishes yeah. rapidly. And the longer I'm in that situation mm. where I'm not receiving the clues, the hints, the and I love women to be very forward mm-hmm. because of my confidence and my background. If if I don't get that, I just find that it's like, whoa, yeah. this is this is bad. And there's been situations where I've been more forward lately but the, the the flip side of that is <laughs> is that that sometimes that that's different to what you're used to, and that freaks you the fuck out. Right. So it's, so it doesn't always work. It doesn't. It doesn't always work. So yeah, let's move on with show. Oh, on the final note of say no, though, you did say no to Roadhead. Right. <laughs> I had Roadhead. Look, Bradford would never forgive me if I didn't bring that up again because it's pretty funny. Look, I'm gonna have. Like you a have week. no problem saying no that time. <laughs> I'm gonna have a week with with Bradford, and he's Darling, gonna. Would you like it, head in the car? No, you found it really easy to say no. <laughs> Good grief! All right, let's move. Let's move onwards. Right, okay. Do we think that that taking one for the team is an overused phrase? Yes. Yes. Done. Next. Oh, okay. that was easy. Yeah. Well done. Um, do we know if we've taken it retroactively? So yes, I think retrospectively we have. Yes. I think there's been times when we've reflected on it, as we said, we've come back to it and thought, yeah. actually, we we have taken one for the team, and I think that for me means that it's also about the experience itself, mm. and or, but also about my mindset or our mindset about the whole thing. Okay, the balance between couples and partners. We talked about that. That's very good. I'm going through my checklist. You are. You're doing very yeah, well. Very I've good. got fuck all in terms of notes, so I'm just relying on you. Yeah, thank you. What does it feel like <laughs> to be the one? Um, Sort of being taken. We again. We, we being taken. Being taken. <laughs> well, my notes weren't <laughs> as English and English horrific as they could have been. But it, you know, is that what does it feel like to be the person that is having the hollow victory? That when you when you uh, realise that yeah. someone doesn't really want to be here, or maybe it's just your perception of that, mm-hmm. because everyone's play style is, and approach is different. And you might be there thinking, "My God, this is the you know they're not putting any effort in. They're not doing anything. They're not." You know, they're not making the moves. They're not even, like, giving you the signs that they're interested, even though this is play. When actually they they might be thinking, my God, this is the hottest experience I've ever had. Mm. You just don't know what's going on in someone's head. So there, is, I think there is something around the having conversations, asking for what you want, making sure that you try and get that as much as you can. Mm. And if you can't salvage that situation, if it's not going anywhere, then being honest and either swapping back or stopping the situation if you can do. Although it's rude to flip a table. Drink their drink and storm out. It is rude to flip a table and um, I wouldn't recommend that at all. Right. No, not that I've ever done that actually, to be fair. So we had a bunch of people on Twitter uh, comment. So um, I thought we could go through through those. I like your uh, unit of measurement there. Bunch of people. Bunch of people. Bunch has been my unit of choice today. Has it really? Yeah. Did you have a bunch of pepper? Today oh, on I your tea. Did, yes. yes, he gave me a bunch of pepper. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Rockstar, Rockstar Astronauts said, uh, <laughs> well, uh, trying to put, oh no, they put a lot more stuff. I'm not even reading the right tweet. How amazing am I doing here? Oh my gosh. Uh, da, 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 so da. glad you're driving. Some people apply this term retroactively, yes, after a less enjoyable experience, leaving the partner feeling they were selfish and regretting the experience if they enjoyed themselves. So, there is something around the, um, yeah. if, if I were to turn around and say, Mrs. H, that was the worst experience ever, and you've had a top-notch yeah. experience. You'll feel bad about the experience, absolutely. Even though you enjoyed it at the time. Uh, Naughty and exploring said something. I'm not going to read it out because I don't want to give them the ego. Oh my god! <laughs> not really. They Jeez. said uh, nailed it when you said it's an overused term. They weren't referring to me, but I'm going to take it that they were. Uh, the, that couple next door said the conversations between you before and after. For example, when one of you thinks that they are taking, would take one for the team, and after when one feels that they did. Also, are the times when you say, okay, I know this is your fantasy, so so I'll do it. Yeah, and again, I, I probably struggle slightly with knowing that you're, um, I suppose you're being a little bit unfair on the person that you're knowingly going to take one for the team with, mm. in a way. But yeah, it's a, it's I guess a, you don't have to tell them that. It's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. I, I think... Knowing that it's your fantasy, so that mm. there are situations where you... I, I don't think it's necessarily taking one for the team. I think what you do is, if, mm. if I'm using my typical Robocop scanner, which yeah. is yay, yay wide or tall, yeah, th- maybe that stretches to a slightly wider scanner okay. and, and allows people of you know that are perhaps a 
4 out of 10 instead of a 5 <laughs> out of 10, my normal. Wait, you play with a 4 out of 10? I, well, every night, dear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to take some shit for that, I bet. However, but you know what I mean. You do, you, it flexes your, your interest or, or, or your ability to cope because you know that you're doing something that will help uh, your partner. All right. So I think there is an element of that. Um, I think, but I don't think for us it's a massive thing. If I'm really honest, I don't think we, we 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 wouldn't have much flex for each other. I suspect. No, I agree. There, there would be a limited amount of flexing going. And plus, on. you're very fussy. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I am very fussy. You really are. Um. So, uh, let's talk about uh, Rockstar Astronaut said. I think there is always some imbalance. That's just life. The only person I'm 100 percent attracted to is my wife. Oh, this is very nice. Um, I think I don't know. I think. We've been attracted to people, I think it's mm-hmm. fair to say. I think, would we want the relationship with them mm. and for them to be a replacement for our <laughs> respective partners? That's different. But actually, I think we could say that we are very attracted to different people. Yeah, and I, that, I think that was one of the things that um, surprised me most about this lifestyle when I realised that we were able to play with other people that had attributes that we'd n- not gotten ourselves mm. if that makes sense yeah so i was almost surprised sometimes to find that you found women attractive if they were radically different from me in some way yeah um or if they did things that you know we didn't necessarily do. well i think we need to go back to that diamond and rough thing i can only polish you so much dear. oh my god oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um behind closed doors uk hello said uh can't wait to listen to this one as you know, it's a subject that fascinates us, given that we don't swing. So it means I only ever play with people I'm very much into. Yeah. Well, there you go. Lording it up over the rest of us. Lordy Lord. Lordy Lord. Lord Lord. I am Lord. <laughs> I am Lord. Um, our Secret Life said, In our experience, there is always an element of taking one for the team. We have yet to encounter the 100% perfect couple. But if one of us goes, that person is a definite no, it is a no. But often one of us is more attracted to the couple than the other. So for me, mm. that doesn't mean taking one for the team. Right. That that just means that one of you just had a better experience. Yeah. Or one of you got a better deal. Pray I do not alter it any further. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then we gave him some bedhopper points, which is very nice. This is, nice this is like Mr. H reads his, his iPad while, while talking on the show. It's quite fun. I quite enjoy this. Um, in our time, uh, that's... Uh, by and by, 45 said, in our time, I don't think there was ever an experience of taking one for the team. Sure, some encounters were less than enjoyable, but we both went into it and came out as a unified couple. No persuasion by either party. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's what we were saying earlier, isn't it, really? Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, swinging down under said they have no what's, none whatsoever. No comments about it. Brilliant. I doubt that. Um, yeah, I doubt that too. Yeah, we know that they've got some opinions. Those filthy little buggers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, damp nylons. I want to say dandelions. But oh my sort of god! Damp l- nylon said, uh, "We've both had complete no nos." Oh okay, <laughs> uh, but have definitely relaxed our standards as our journey continues. It's all about having fun and the four ticks rule. But there are levels of ticks, of course. I agree. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Yeah. But I would say that you've uh, you haven't relaxed your standards as you've gone on. You've just raised them. Uh, and they had a naughty sleepover uh, that oh. is as close as it gets to two big ticks. Uh, they oh, are who said big tits then? Big big dicks and big tits. Uh, they <laughs> are bringing uh, bringing their bag of tricks. It appears they've been holding out on us. So there we go. Tricks, tits, and dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Quicks. Uh, is it taking one for the team? Say Poppy's top fan. If there is really a hot lady that both of you want to play with, but she comes attached with a fugly bloke. Oh, we just talked about they, that. Well, they didn't know that when they posted it. Well, they the <laughs> mind readers clearly. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think that. You can take one for the team for yourself, or or you can noted. Yeah, you can have a lesser experience with one person to have a better experience yes, with the other. That's yeah. Yes. Compromise. Um, they got ten bed hopper points for that, and they want to know how many points it is before they win a prize. Brilliant! Um, they win a macchiato. No, I'm the, bringing the coffee. The back. points are the prize. Um, oh. And sex people messaged us. They're sex people, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, "Evening, you filthy buggers." And that's right. Is that it? Uh, no. Oh. And there's more. Uh, take him one for the team, eh? Don't do it. It's not big and it's not clever. We know who we know who each other find attractive and stick to it. Even in a straight swap scenario, I don't want to watch 
uh, buy one with an ugly bloke, and she doesn't want to see uh, get one free balls deep in the munter. Why oh, would wow. you compromise if you have pizza? You're not going to stick rice pudding on it, are you? <laughs> or even pineapple, no matter how depraved you are. What an amazing metaphor. It was. Um, pineapple is perfectly fine on pizza, as is eating your pizza with a knife and fork. Well, no, we know you're a serial killer for that. Well, I could be whatever I like. It's my show. <laughs> you're just a special guest. Screw you. Very I'm special going guest. <laughs> oh, really? I'm, I'm your guest? Yeah. Be Lumiere. Ah. Uh, Guest be our guest, put on my cock to the test. Oh my god! I don't know what happened to the, the patter of that. That went full wrong, didn't it? <laughs> Tie a napkin round your neck, Cherie, and I'll spaff up the rest. I do not remember these lyrics. Do you not? No. <laughs> Wait I until think we get you to, are making um, them up. Soup du jour and cheese souffle. <laughs> I'd rather not, thank you. <laughs> Dick cheese souffle. <laughs> oh, very nice. So <laughs> that concludes most of the uh, Twitter comments, I think. Um, if you made a comment and we didn't men- mention it, um, sorry. He probably didn't like it. Uh, no, I, I, I did like it. <laughs> I just um, forgot to paste it onto my um, notes. Yeah, so, right. You know, it's, um, it's hard work. He was just it. too busy singing uh, superfluous Disney lyrics that he's made what? up. What? Gosh, yeah. it disturbs me to see you, Gaston. <laughs> Anyways, so yes. take him on for the team then. In summary, I think... Yes. It is an overused phrase. Would you agree? I would agree with that. I think it's more about having an experience that one of you, where one of you has perhaps a better experience than the other. So your levels of enjoyment are mismatched. Yes. A mismatched enjoyment experience. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean... We need an acronym. You take them on for the team. It just means you didn't enjoy it as much as the other person enjoyed that. I think if you're not enjoying the experience, then you need to be able to say, um, can we stop? Can we... swap back can we do whatever it is that you need to do and be honest and open about that Mm. so that actually you don't sit there wallowing in this fact that you're having this this not as nice experience or this bad experience or whatever it might be um and looking over seeing your partner having this amazing experience it's okay to say um sweetie it's not going great Mm. or maybe you don't i I think the option of swapping back to your partners is really good because it saves a little bit of embarrassment all around you're not withdrawing completely from the situation you're Mm -hmm. just getting it back on track so that your enjoyment levels can come back again yeah or can we swap back and go to our hotel room <laughs> <laughs> maybe not as tactful as as you might like <laughs> so uh in terms of other things that that i really wanted to pick up on it was around the value that you present as a couple mm. and being honest and open about that and thinking about what you bring to the table yeah and in a really positive way so don't be afraid to approach a couple who you might consider to be a 10. Oh, wow. Um, and put yourselves out there. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, okay. And make the most of that confidence that, that you wield as a couple. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I think that's about right. So, um, other than that, anything else you want to add? I'm taking one for the team. No, I think you've covered most of it as as well as you can. Because, as we said in the beginning, it's a huge subject. It is. Um, and you, you could spend hours debating it, really. Yeah, I think so. I think it's one of those things where you see it a lot. You see it out there. Everyone says it. And I think really there's probably a lot more, there's a much more positive way to look at it. Yeah. And I hope in future I can probably, you know, start to think much more that way and start to 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 feel like it's much more about an experience. I think for me that really important bit is actually if I'm not enjoying it, to say no. Mm. Um, And if you're not enjoying it, give you the support that you need to be able to do the same mm. yeah I agree. and being a bit more mindful of where where our heads are at. Nice. so anything else no right so for next time round yes i'm so excited about this list swinging room 101 I... if you have a complaint about the swinging lifestyle please send a it to complaint bed hobbies. about it i wish to register a complaint <laughs> <laughs> please send it to bed hoppers suck at g- gmail.com or bedhoppers suck on twitter or bedhoppers on fabswingers.com yes send it to us um anywhere you like any of those places and um it would be really really appreciated and we'll chuck it into swinging room 101 yeah i'm so excited i've added another 10 things to my list just to my last half hour really yeah it's just with me so mr h mr h is singing mr h doing disney songs mr h playing with robots <laughs> Mr. H playing with 10 out of 10s. No. 
you're never in my room one on one. Am I not? No. No, I'm just always constantly dangling, hanging on there by one little, little bitty pinky finger. I mean, which... your constant level of wires is in there, but fine. Well, it doesn't affect our lifestyle. In fact, that has helped us on Lifestyle Adventures many occasions. Mm. Nope, it's not often that, that I've been able to save the day through, you know... A bit of wire. A bit of wire, but I have done it. You have. I have. See, it's there we go. Bear grills. Yeah. The bear grills of a swinging world. That's a very strange... Yeah, it's a very strange comparison. Um, really? But I'll, I'll, I think bear grills would do well in the swinging world. I think he'd do well with you. It, it, yeah, all right. And there we go. <laughs> right, and I know, Mrs H, do the thing. <laughs> well, thank you for hopping into our bed. So I uh, just want to pick up this Bear Grylls thing. Oh, I'd love to pick up Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> so he's one of your strange celebrity yeah, crushes, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Who else is on the strange celebrity Mrs. H crush list? Oh, bloody hell. Oh. Matt Berry. Matt Berry. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Jack Black. Jack Black. Okay. Uh, Louis Theroux. Louis Theroux. Yeah, I mean, he's not a strange crush, but you wouldn't look at him and think, four. Four? <laughs> I'd give him one. <laughs> <laughs> so what we need to do is go to Time Machine. Uh, go back why? to the 90s. He's still alive. No, no. Go back oh. to the 90s when he went on the swinging episode. Oh my God. I didn't actually fancy him that much then. Did you not? No. Oh, it's only as he's got older and greyer. I, w- I would say maybe that's taking one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. So like we, we go back in time and then oh some poor bugger puts Netflix on and watches the episode of Louis Theroux, the <laughs> swinging one. And there's us gurning twats in the background waving your hands. <laughs> it's us from the future. <laughs> yes. Would it I... be considered grooming though if you did that? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Okay. Any of those? Groom one and one. Um, anyone else? Um, oh, there's tons of people in my weird list. Really? Uh, do you know what? I think Jeremy Carl even made it in there at one point. What the actual fuck? I know. I mean, that's awful, right? Right, I'm going to have to have a DNA test to see if we can sort this one out. <laughs> I'll take a lie detector test. 